I had just under 3,000 followers in February of 2023. And today at the time of making this one, we are at 385,000. Hey guys, my name is Justin and I'm making a three-part video series sharing with you how I gained 300,000 followers in 30 days on Instagram. This video is part two. This is not an official Instagram growth insider hack by any means. I'm not trying to sell you the idea that this is going to be easy too because creating original content for 30 days straight is a lot more challenging than it sounds. I will say that by doing these 10 things, I was able to achieve this massive breakthrough that honestly I thought could only happen to someone else. So I'm making this series because I just kind of want to pay it forward and before we begin, it would mean so much to me if you could hit that subscribe button while we are here. And since we are talking about Instagram, maybe you could check me out over there too and give me a follow. With that out of the way, this is my top 10 tips to get 300,000 followers in 30 days. Tip number one shoot for the platform. First thing I did was to shoot dedicated videos instead of reusing or breaking down long form content into mini sound bites. This meant shooting vertically and writing an optimized script specifically for that topic. From a technical standpoint, it meant I was taking full advantage of my camera sensor, getting better image quality out of it. It meant shooting at 30 FPS instead of 24 FPS like I do for my YouTube videos like this because it turns out Instagram recommends using 30 FPS. And because the script was optimized, I was able to use very simple language, remove as much technical jargon as I could, and there was very little fluff if at all, which is very important because time in short form content is more valuable than gold. You have so little of it, so you really have to make every word you say count. This leads me to tip number two, using a hook. In the age of short form videos, the first three seconds is the most important because it's all the time you have to make a person decide whether or not they're gonna scroll past your content. So think about starting your videos with things like how to or X things you can do. Using a hook is also a really effective way of keeping your audience interested because it immediately gives them an idea of what to expect. Plus I found that really helped a lot in framing my thoughts and scripting the videos out as well. I would actually try to spend a little bit more time on writing the best hook I could because I figured if I was going to make people stop scrolling, this was probably going to be the most crucial thing. If you're interested to know more about this, here are two reels I made on some scroll stopping hooks you can try. But if there's one tip that I can give you right now, it's that I made sure I used the word you within the first five seconds of every video. Making the content about others and how it can help them greatly increases your chances of grabbing people's attention. The next thing you can try is called pattern interrupts. People are scrolling all day and most of the time, many videos just look the same. Using a pattern interrupt literally interrupts their scroll for a split second and increases the chances of them to stop their thumb from scrolling. And this can be something so simple as sitting down or quick zoom ins, but my favorite thing is adding this split second move. Tip number four is using trigger words. People on the internet can be literally triggered by anything nowadays, you'd be surprised. I'm not saying to purposely offend or use ugly language, nothing of the sort, but knowing and understanding what words will elicit some sort of emotion from your intended audience is another great way of grabbing their attention. As long as you deliver on your promise, meaning if you say a trick is going to be easy or do you tell them that this trick is going to save them time, then you have to deliver. Otherwise, it will just be clickbait and no one really likes clickbaits. This next part is what I like to call hyper editing. How many videos have you seen where it's just literally a person talking straight to the camera for like 30 to 60 seconds and if for some reason your feed is filled with that, how many of those do you watch completely? I typically wouldn't go more than 3 to 4 seconds without something new happening in the video. This could be a simple cut and scale, a sound effect, animated captions, even adding transitions. Not the ones you would use in a PowerPoint presentation though. Each of the reels I made took me about 9 to 13 hours to edit. Do you need to take that long too? Probably not, but making sure the videos were visually stimulating without losing the message and doing everything by myself without a team, that's just how long it took me on the average. If you're interested, here are some of the top effects and transitions I used for my videos. Number one is a film burn. Number two, paper rip. Three is a half tone effect. Four is a crumpled paper effect. Five, whip or whoosh transitions. It was honestly very tiring, but editing was also where I found the most fun. Tip number six is to add captions. 
In an article published on Forbes.com, they found out that 69% of people view videos with sound off in public places and 25% watch with sound off in private places. A whopping 80% of people were more likely to watch an entire video if captions were available and 50% say captions are important because they watch videos without any sound. A thing I learned that's quite hard to avoid on Instagram specifically is that sometimes your videos will be muted depending on certain countries or locations, even if you're using the music within the app itself. So just imagine if your videos didn't have captions and a person from a restricted country sees it and it's muted. That would be such a missed opportunity and hours of work down the drain. I use Adobe Premiere and again, I've already made a short video on that topic that you can check out right here. Tip number seven is don't overthink hashtags. I use the least amount of hashtags I've ever used in the history of my being on Instagram. I don't have data about the optimal number of hashtags to use and whether or not they are still actually relevant. I did, however, use the topics feature. The value you provide will be so much more important than researching hashtags to use, in my opinion. Tip number eight is to write a great caption that supplements your videos. You can only say so much in 15 to 30 seconds. So instead of trying to stuff so much information in so little time, I focus on the main topic and instead supplemented everything else I wanted to say in the caption. This makes your post even more valuable to the people who sees it. This next tip is simply to be consistent and be patient. Doing one video a day for 30 days straight is not as easy as it sounds, and especially if you're looking to make original content. When I started on the first six videos, the result was almost immediate. None of them were viral by any means, but they were definitely getting a lot more views than any of the other reels I've made in the past, and they were enough to give me a bit of an idea in figuring out what type of content would work and be effective for my niche. It wasn't until probably day 18 or 20 that one video suddenly got picked up and pushed, and it was honestly mind-blowing. I couldn't believe it was happening at all. What is equally important to note is that while it took 30 days to get 300k, it took me 10 years to get 3k as well. Hey guys, this is current me. I'm actually working on this video right now. I'm editing it and while I was listening to it, I felt like I kind of went off topic on that bit and I actually missed a really important point I wanted to make about being consistent and being patient. So here goes. One of the biggest importance of being consistent, being patient, regardless of whether or not your videos are getting views at the moment is because as soon as one of them does get picked up and a person who's watching your high quality stuff goes to your page, and because you kind of already banked on all of these other high quality, highly engaging stuff you've made, there is going to be a high probability for them to comment, like, and share your other works as well. And this is actually what I felt like happened to my account. So yeah, I thought I missed this bit in that first part. Uh, so I hope this helps you out. Anyways, back to the video. We are, however, I think very lucky to be in a time where platforms like Instagram are providing us with tools to actually grow and grow fast if done correctly. Tip number 10 is to make it actionable. This is the biggest tip I would like to share in this video. The one single factor that gave me the sense of whether or not a video would perform quote unquote well regardless of the camera gear you're using or your experience in video editing. The more your video feels like what you're sharing is something they can immediately apply, the more likely your intended audience are going to like it. My best performing reels focused on things you could do right now. Camera moves, fonts you can use, and sound effects. Heck, a video I made about how you should essentially move your camera from one side to the other side of your light source got around 122,000 views, all because it was something you could easily do right now right after. So those are my top 10 tips to get 300,000 followers in 30 days on Instagram. I hope you guys got a ton of value out of this. And like I said in the beginning of this video, I'm not saying that if you do just these 10 things, you're guaranteed to get 300k. You might not get that much or you might even get more. Who knows? I get messages from people saying they've been doing the same thing. They've been posting every day, but they're not getting any results. Again, I'm no expert on this, but they say insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. If you've been doing the same thing over and over again and you're not getting the results you're looking for, then it might be time to sit down and really analyze what's working and what's not. Always think about the value you bring and your execution. An old idea can feel fresh and original if you deliver it properly or creatively. At the end of the day, it's your content and you should have the final say. But I will be excited to hear if you guys end up doing these and start seeing traction and success. So please be sure to come back to this video to let me know. I would 
greatly appreciate that. If you have any questions, comment them down below. Like I said, this is a three-part series. Check out part one and part three, which hopefully I would have already published by the time you're watching this. If not, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you know when it goes live. My name is Justin and thank you for watching.